Okay, we'd like to go ahead and start. My name is Robin Riddle, and I have a little bit longish title. I'm the coordinator of the American Parkinson Disease Association Information and Referral Center at Stanford University Medical Center. And thank you so much for coming today. So this center is a joint project between the APDA, or the American Parkinson Disease Association, and Stanford University. And there are about 50 of these centers around the United States, and um, we all are sponsored by uh, the APDA and then another local institution, and in my case, it's Stanford. And uh, we provide information and referrals to anyone in Northern California. You don't have to be a Stanford patient or a family. And about 30% of today's cost of, of the event is funded by those of you in the room, both the family members and the professional caregivers and, and also the exhibitors in the back of this room and, and out in the lobby. And um, we also have uh, two other donors, or two other funders. We'd like to acknowledge the John A. Bloom Foundation for their support. They've also supported an event we had in July, a caregiver only event. And Jean Bloom, Mrs. John Bloom, she's an absolutely remarkable woman. She believes that caregivers, we need our own private place to vent and to share. And so she has put, put money behind her words and behind her principles. And that's why we had an event in July and, and that's one of the reasons why we're here today is that we have John Bloom Foundation funding. And then our center at Stanford is, is the other major funder today. And I'd like to just tell you about a couple of uh, criticisms that came out of that event that we had in July. There were two really big ones. One was that there was not enough time in the agenda for the audience to ask questions of the speakers. And so if you'll notice on the agenda today, we've specifically given Q&A time, and usually it's 20 minutes or 25 minutes, so we hope that we can keep our speakers on track and have their presentations in a certain amount of time. We have a good amount of time for the presentations, usually about 45 minutes, and then we'll have a Q&A time. So hopefully that'll fix that, that suggestion. The other criticism that we had was that when we had questions from the audience, there were a few times we, we did, people hogged the microphone and went on and on and on about their personal problems, and that was a really big complaint. And a couple of the evaluations that people filled out, apparently they, some woman talked about a vibrator and all kinds of stuff that sounded very inappropriate. So, <laughs> so we don't want to do that today. So in front of you, I think you were each given three index cards and uh, you can probably steal some from your neighbor if you run out. And we have plenty more cards, so just raise your hand if you need more cards. And um, we, we'd like for you to write down your questions on the question cards. And the volunteers will be circulating uh, throughout the presentation and they'll pick up your question cards if you just raise a card in, your, in the air. And if you need help writing questions, I know some of you may not be able to write very well, the volunteers will also be ready to help you with that. So all of the today's volunteers, and we have, I think, 12 of them, they all came from our local support group called Brain Support Network. And um, we now have called the group Brain Support Network. We used to call it the Northern California Atypical Parkinsonism Caregiver Only Support Group. <laughs> that sounded kind of long, so we've, we've shortened it and gone to Brain Support Network. And so um, I'd like to thank all of our volunteers for being here today. And if the volunteers, if you could all raise your hands now so people can kind of know where you are. Okay, great. And at some point, these volunteers will be circulating and picking up question cards, and we'll, that's how we'll move forward on that. So we want to be sure that we have some more support groups in place. On if you open your packets, on the right-hand side are all the materials that you'll need for today. It's most of the presentations. We didn't get everybody's presentation on time, but it's most of the presentation, the agenda, all the evaluation forms. And on the left-hand side are informational resources that you might like to have for the future. 
And one of those informational resources is a list of all of the atypical Parkinsonism support groups. On the first page is a list of support groups in Northern California. And unfortunately, there are only four. I couldn't believe it. And our group is one of the four, and probably the largest of the four. So I also attached um, on that same list uh, all of the telephone-based support groups and all of the um, online support groups. There, there are quite a few other choices. But at the end of the day, I'm going to describe to you, um, so we're going to have a geographic mingling. And uh, if you're interested in staying after 445, it won't be too much longer. We'd like to get people together by geography to see if we can get some more support groups going. So I'd like to tell you a bit about those of you who are here today. There are, will be 180 of us, or, or pretty, pretty close to that, which is a great turnout for the first Bay Area event of this kind. And there are, of those 180, the 150 of you are family members. 53 are dealing with dementia with Lewy bodies. 34 with progressive supranuclear palsy. 31 with multiple system atrophy and 30 with corticobasal syndrome or degeneration. And the green packets are DLB, the sky blue packets are PSP, white is MSA, and then the dark blue is CBD. So you'll notice that you're sitting at a table marked with that color, and you should remain at that table. The PSP breakout section will be over here, the CBD breakout section will be here, uh, the MSA sec breakout session will be over here, and DLB will be in another room just on the other side of the lobby near to where check-in was. So at, at the end of this session, some air walls will come up along here, and the ballroom will actually be divided into three different groups. We also have um, 12 professionals here earning continuing education units, and we'd like to acknowledge um, the Alzheimer's Association, they're sponsoring the CEUs for today. It's the only way that that would be possible, so that's a great thing. And then uh, we have uh, 13 professional caregivers at, at various exhibitor tables, and they're from home care agencies, home health agencies, caregiver support programs, and adult daycare programs. And I'd like to acknowledge one exhibitor in particular, and that's Cure PSP. They have a table in the back. Say hi to Loretta and Sam. Uh, Cure PSP is sponsoring the video recording of today's symposium, or most of today's symposium. Uh, we just uh, arranged that last week, and um, probably by April of 2013, a DVD will be available of today's event. So that's wonderful. Yes, thank you. And here's a list of all of our support group volunteers. So now I'd like to tell you why it is that I'm here today. Eight years ago, my father, who was 64 at the time, was diagnosed with progressive supranuclear palsy. What happened was we took him to a neurologist because I found that his thinking had become very illogical. And he was quite irrational and displayed very poor judgment. Just one example, he was getting ready to go on a trip to Acapulco, and he had no cash in his wallet. And he assumed that he could you'd find ATMs wherever he had to go, and, and all would be well. So that was very disturbing. And so we went to the neurologist, and it was a general neurologist. And he had dad stand on his tippy toes and walk, and then stand on his heels and walk. Then he did quite a few tests of eye movement. He had Dad put his finger at the tip of his nose and try to look at the tip of the finger or the tip of the nose. And there were quite a few other tests of eye movement. And the doctor was also very interested in learning that four years before that appointment, Dad had started complaining of leg weakness. And by that time, he was already starting to experience falls which he, he attributed to being in unfamiliar places. He said, oh, I only fall when I'm in a new place. Um, eventually, he, st he started falling everywhere, so that, that excuse didn't quite ring true. And also, his speech was very slurred, especially after he had a little bit of red wine, every, which he drank every evening. So a few minutes after this te these tests were done, 
we got the PSP diagnosis, and we joined a club that none of us wants to be part of, and I'm sure you all feel the exact same way. So as luck would have it, the Society for PSP, which is now called Cure PSP, was having a family conference here in San Francisco, and there were only about 50 of us who went, but I met three other adult children at that event. Each of us had, a parent, had parents who were divorced, and so we were each the primary caregiver to our, our parent with PSP. So we started in July of 2004 a PSP support group, and it was a caregiver-only group, and we met over dinner at a restaurant in San Mateo, and today we're still meeting at the same place. And that year there were four of us, then six, and eventually eight. And then in early 2005, a remarkable physical therapist named Marilyn Basham contacted me and asked if I would accept Lewy body dementia caregivers into the group. And I had no idea what a Lewy body was, how to spell Lewy, what did it all mean. And she explained that it was sometimes confused for PSP and that we could do a great thing if we included LBD caregivers. So my friend Karen Duncan was the first Lewy body dementia caregiver in the support group. And she's here today and will be the moderator of the DLB breakout session. Then a short while later, Marilyn Basham, the physical therapist, called me again and asked if we could accept corticobasal degeneration caregivers. She explained that CBD was something of a cousin to PSP. It wasn't the exact same disease, but many of the symptoms were similar. And I had never heard of CBD before, and so we said, sure, we'll, we'll take anybody as long as they think they're having the same kind of problems we are. So uh, Joanne was our first member in, in CBD, and she's unfortunately not here today. And then finally, in early 2006, Marilyn, the physical therapist, called me yet again and asked if we would accept multiple system atrophy caregivers. And she also explained that MSA was sometimes confused for PSP. So Candy Welsh, who's here today, she was our first MSA caregiver in our group, and she'll be the moderator of that breakout session. So we, we renamed ourselves at that time from the PSP caregiver group to the atypical Parkinsonism group. And we have um, mostly 20 to 30 people at our caregiver support group meetings. It's a pretty large crowd. And we, we although the, th the four of us who started the group were adult children caregivers, we knew that we really wanted to attract spouse caregivers. And we realized that the spouses often wouldn't have time to join the group until after their family member had died, after their spouse had died. An example of that is Sharon Reichart, who joined our group after her husband, Den, passed away. And Sharon's here today, and she's the moderator of the PSP breakout session. So thank you for coming. So as I said, our support group renamed ourselves again to the Brain Support Network, which is much easier to say. And we're a nonprofit organization in the state of California. So besides the support group, I was very interested in coming up to speed on all of the research going on. And because, I, because my father had PSP, I started with PSP naturally. And someone very early on told me that there was this great resource out there called PubMed. And it's at pubmed.gov. And it's a list of all of the abstracts published of all of the journal articles around the world. And while most of them are English language uh, publications. Many of them are not. They're German and French, but the abstracts at least are all in English, and so you can read the abstracts at no charge. So I started looking at the research abstracts and articles that were about PSP, and nearly every article I saw was authored or co-authored by a person named I. Litvan. And I learned later on that I stood for Irene, and that Dr. Litvan was a neurologist, at the National Institutes of Health. While she was at NIH, she was the lead author of the criteria to diagnose PSP. And after researching MSA, DLB, and CBD, I found her name on many of those articles as well. And I also saw the term atypical Parkinsonism. In 2002, Dr. Litvan moved to the University of Louisville in Kentucky, where she was the head of the Movement Disorder Center there. And in 2006, she won an NIH grant to study the genetic and environmental risk factors associated with PSP. 
In 2009, she and other CBD experts gathered to discuss new diagnostic criteria for that disorder. And I think we're getting a little sneak preview of that today. So finally, Dr. Litt Van moved to the University of California at San Diego, where she's the director of the Movement Disorder Center there. So I saw my opportunity, Dr. Litt Van in California. I snatched, seized the opportunity, and we have Dr. Litt Van here today to talk to us all. Thank you so much for coming. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.